Have you ever heard of the Permian to Triassic extinction event? The Permian to Triassic extinction event, nicknamed the Great Dying, was the greatest known mass extinction in the history of our planet. It was a mass extinction that occurred approximately 250 million years ago and killed 93% of all life on Earth at the time. But how did this cataclysmic tragedy happen on our very own planet? Let's go back into the Earth's prehistoric past to see how this unfolded. First of all, how did this happen? Well, let's just say that it's complicated. Unlike the Cretaceous to Paleogene extinction event, which was the asteroid impact 66 million years ago that killed 75% of all life on Earth, including the dinosaurs, the Permian to Triassic extinction event's cause was a bit more elusive. According to geologists, this event occurred over thousands of years. Thus, it could not have been an asteroid because when an asteroid hits our planet, the extinction event will happen very quickly and suddenly and will take a shorter amount of time for biodiversity to recover. So that's off the list. However, Paleontologist Michael Benton thinks that, from rock records, highly active strong volcanoes in Siberia erupted at the time, causing tons of lava to cover the entire Siberian island that's right here on the map. Geologists call this extraordinary amount of lava covering many miles of land a flood basalt. What was going on during the extinction event? The lava covered the entire Siberian island, and ash from the eruptions fell worldwide and all over the supercontinent Pangaea. An unthinkable amount of CO2 and sulfur dioxide was released into the atmosphere. And sulfur dioxide plus water in the clouds equals acid rain. Now, acid rain and ash were falling in tremendous amounts across the globe. These two weather phenomena poisoned the oceans and soil and caused vegetation to vanish. The CO2 caused a runaway greenhouse effect and caused the land to dry into a desert. Animals at the time, like reptiles such as Gorgonopsids and Dictodons, were killed. The oceans lost almost all oxygen due to the extreme heat, and every living thing in the oceans except for algae died. The dominant algae was pink, which, as a result, turned the oceans pink. Frozen permafrost methane at the seafloor melted and, being 20 times deadlier than CO2, was released into the atmosphere. The Earth's average temperature was 107 degrees Fahrenheit, or 42 degrees Celsius. That's the average temperature of the Sahara Desert at the moment. The eruptions continued for half a million years until the lava covered the area of the size of the continental United States in three feet or one meter of lava. Studies also show that, after all the eruptions, the volcanic ash and gases in the atmosphere would have blocked the sun and caused temperatures to plummet until Earth was in a global winter for a few decades. 
This would have been devastating for any remaining life because the few lone plants would die from the lack of photosynthesis, and then the few lone herbivores would die, then the few lone carnivores would die, and soon enough, pretty much every living thing on our planet would die. In the end, it took Earth more than 10 million years to recover. Poor Earth. Did you know that we are currently in a mass extinction right now? The Holocene extinction, aka climate change, is the extinction of biodiversity caused by us humans. And in the near future, if we don't do something, we will have a mass extinction unlike any other in our planet's history, likely even bigger than the Permian to Triassic extinction event. So, let's make a change so that this nightmarish scenario doesn't happen and life will continue for millions of years to come. <laughs>